PHLY Eagles podcast, Bo Wolf, Zach Berman, high noon on a Wednesday, or as we like to think of it here, day two of Donald Parham Watch here in Philadelphia. Zach Berman, how you doing? <laughs> doing well. Excited for the show. Uh, the reference was from yesterday's game, and actually our out, out, outstanding social media head here, uh, Chris, was doing a graphic yesterday and it's like are you on team Bo or team Zach and I'm like yeah I would definitely be on the side that gets them AJ Terrell and Justin Simmons over <laughs> Donald Parham and Miles Bryant so I was I was trying tick, to tick tock tock <laughs> Joe Ortiz let's make a deal call up Howie Roseman Donald uh, Parham let's yeah. get him on the move I was trying to appeal to the uh to the people who are like you know watching Day three of the draft. Sure. Yeah. Al, you know, I, I wasn't going for the headline. I should have gone for the headline. That's okay. Yeah. You did, you did your, you showed that you did your research. <laughs> that was fun. So you can watch that or listen to that on yesterday's episode. The guys who we think that uh, might still be out there for the Eagles. But today is a fun day. Today is one of the crown jewels of the Eagles offseason as far as we are concerned. The 2024 <laughs> Should duck, we address duck, what we're, juice and draft? Should we address what we're laughing at? Because we do have oh, the a, elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah, we have a strong audience, uh, a strong audio audience as yes. as well. So I, because I I listened to the show back in the car and I had to remind myself. Mm, sometimes we maybe don't do a good enough job yeah. of addressing the audio audience exactly, and describing what's going on. So Bo, for the third day in a row, is representing Pitt with mm. Pitt colors here, mm. gold and blue. He's wearing the same shirt three days now in a row. You wonder the longer that I wear it, the more orange it looks, <laughs> I feel like. If, if, if I say it's orange, will you stop wearing it? I don't know. It There's is orange. How about that? There out. you go. I can, can see. This right here is orange. I can see if you squint and, and like really stretch the definition of orange, that's orange. Um, so, yeah. So. Now you see, I think what I have done here is it's a good lesson for uh, for everybody out there. And that's, you know... I wore this shirt a couple months ago, uh, maybe a month ago, and it got it got back to me that uh, not somebody thought it was an ugly shirt, and so I could go one of two ways: I can just not wear it anymore, take the other person's take the other person's input, and say, "Oh, okay, you decide what I'm going to wear." Or what I have done now is I have made this shirt my own thing. Yeah. This is this shirt is a, it's a part of the show now. It's like a, it's a bit, but it's also. Uh, I have made it my own. I've taken it away from whoever your unknown source was. <laughs> well, I'm actually jealous of you in, in that regard. I've I've always envied like Steve Jobs just wearing the same same thing each each day. You t and Sam Hinkie does it too. You you take a decision out of your day right right there. Uh, but if you're not like a, a famous CEO or a famous general manager, it can come off as just like sloppy. This guy just wears the same thing every day, right? Not the same, not the literal same thing, but it's unimaginative, right? So. I hope to get to a point where I can just wear the black hoodie every day and mm. roll with it. Yeah. You know what? Listen, I, I make fun of uh, Hinky and Jobs for those types of things, but I got to tell you, you know, to not have to spend four minutes this morning deciding what shirt yeah. I was going to wear is kind of nice. Exactly. That's four minutes you could have allocated to researching Donald Parham. Mm. Donald Junior. Parham. That's <laughs> Junior. Right. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get, uh, let's, let's get things cooking here as we prepare for the Duck Duck Juice draft. Now, those of you who are new to the Duck Duck Juice Draft. Here's what we're going to do. The Eagles have eight picks in this year's draft. They have a first-round pick, two second-round picks, a fourth, three-fifths, and a sixth. And Zach and I are going to go back and forth drafting the positions that we think the Eagles are likeliest to take early in the draft, but whatever, the, whatever we think is going to accumulate the most points. And the points here go seven points for a first-round pick, Six points for a second round pick, so uh, two second round picks on the board right now. Five points for a third round pick, and on down the line to just one point for a seventh round pick. There are 12 positions available. Quarterback, 
running back, wide receiver, tight end, tackle, interior offensive line, edge, defensive tackle, linebacker, corner, safety, and special teams. Now, there are a couple players where there might be some debate about the position. If there is debate, it will come down to where they take their first snap on the first day of practice. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm excited. This is actually a, a really good exercise. I I don't mean to interrupt. You want to I, address the uh, the Mustafer in the room? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah. You know me well, Bo. You saw that <laughs> the Eagles didn't make a signing yesterday afternoon. PJ Mustafer, um, a defensive tackle uh, from Penn State, was undrafted last year. Signed with the Broncos, uh, then went was was on their practice squad. Finished the season with New Orleans. Uh, they he would have been an exclusive rights player, but they he actually was a free agent. The Eagles signed him, and so that was the move yesterday. We should just update that news. I didn't mean to interject the That's rules. That's okay. But no, we should talk about it. We do yeah. a show every day. If they yes. make a move, we should talk about it. Exactly. So just wanted to give, and I wanted to give PJ his shine in case fans down in Owings Mills. Are what do you know about PJ? Uh, he's from Owings Mills, Maryland. Um, was a uh, two-time second team All Big Ten player at Penn State. I think he's like 6'4", 315, if memory serves. and No Ellis competition, basically. Yeah, Marlon 2 below 2. Yeah, or is there a PJ, maybe Tierra Tart. Is there a PJ Mistifer? <laughs> I don't think there is a Sam, though. Hmm. A Sam Mustafer. Okay. Yes. And? Good locker room guy at PSU, according to Riley. Do you think I like this uh, conspiracy theory that was floated out there that um, in exchange for James Franklin's silence in the NFL's investigation into uh, <laughs> the Eagles tampering with Saquon Barkley, the tit for tat is that they would yeah. sign PJ Mustafer. I mean, they they probably could have uh, shot a little higher <laughs> for the silence, but sure, maybe so. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's the tit for tat, but. Okay. Now I do feel a little bit of uh, of guilt here because yes. we decided. This morning to do the du- yeah, Duck Duck Late last draft. night, yeah. Late last night. And in so doing, I forgot that Jimmy Kemsky is a defending champion here. Yes. And so he's not going to have a chance to defend his crown. But let's uh, let's just say that we're going to extend an invite to Jimmy to join us at some point this offseason for a different game if, if he's available. I would love that. Anytime we can have Jimmy here it is a good time. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta maybe have to keep him away from Vince. He <laughs> loves him so much. We don't want him fanboying out. But there's a lot of people who fanboy over Jimmy Kemsky. Yeah, so. that's understandable. Yep. All right, Zach. Now, um, I think one of the fun things about you know having Howie Roseman as general manager is that he's already been in charge of 13 drafts. This will be his 14th draft in charge. So that's one have, of the fun things. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. I think it is you, fun because have we, have, yeah, exactly. we have a I agree. history I agree. to pull from. And yep. I want to. I have a couple of duck duck juice uh, trivia questions for you. Okay. Okay. Over the course Ooh, of his, thir- I didn't do any studying over here. Over the course of his 13 years in charge, what position do you think has accumulated the most Duck Duck Juice points? <laughs> so Duck Duck Juice started in uh, 2017. No, no, no. I mean, I'm saying if if oh, if we went gotcha. back okay. retroactively, starting in the 2010 draft through 2023, but discounting 2015, right? Yeah. All of the Howie Roseman drafts. What position has he spent the most draft capital on if we are valuing draft capital the way Duck Duck Juice does? Seven for a first, six for a second, five for a third, and on and on. Defensive tackle. Interestingly, defensive tackle tied for third. Ooh, that surprises 42 me. 42 points. Okay, because you had yeah, you had multiple first rounders there, but that's you know, you don't get credit for the Mike Patterson, Broderick Bunkley points. Mm, so yes. then you early you miss on, uh, you know, exactly. a, a seventh on Jeff Owens, nothing yes. in twenty eleven. Oh, then okay. Fletcher Cox. So then, so then I would say that he's had three first round edge rushers because I was actually I was actually texting with Elliot about this yesterday. Uh, so sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah. Shout with out. emojis? I did not use emojis. No. Okay. I'm still not a big emoji guy. I, I think yeah, I can use words to describe. You know how pictures mm. worth a thousand words? I'd rather a thousand words. So, by the way, uh, speaking of emojis, there is a there's a pineapple emoji, and that reminds me that uh, we are doing a a PHLY Eagles bracket challenge. Okay. Uh, I can I can tweet out the link, but this is uh, this is for the sickos. The password for that challenge is pineapple with a capital P. <laughs> uh, you can always count on esoterica here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. So is Edge your guess? Yeah. Well, so I'm as I'm going through this here. 
Let's see. He's done tackle twice in the first round. He's done edge three times. Nolan Smith, Derek Barnett, uh, Brandon Graham. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go edge. Edge is correct. You okay. also forgot about Derek Barnett. I said Barnett. Uh, okay. I said Nolan Smith, Derek Barnett, Brandon gotcha. Graham. Okay. Yeah. And Vinnie Curry in the, in the second in round. The second round. And Marcus Smith in the first yeah. round. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. So, edge is uh, high and away, number one, at 58. Yep. Do you want to Do you want to care to guess number two? Number two here. Uh, let's go with... He's, let's go with wide receiver. Wide receiver is correct. Okay. At number two. And then tied for third at de- with defensive tackle is? Offensive tackle. Interestingly not. Interior? Cornerback. Corner. Cornerback is there at 42. Uh, a lot of second tackle round. is or... actually pretty far down the list, which may come okay. to play as we uh, move into this game. Now, here's what we're going to do for the uh, mechanics of the draft today, Zach. And wait, I, I just want to correct it here because this is going to come up with the draft. As we saw last year, it actually hurt Bo, unfortunately. Is so I, I see when someone says wide receiver a, a first for AJ Brown that doesn't count if you trade for a veteran that does not count in this yeah, draft part of the uh, part of the fun of doing it like a month before the draft a few things could change between yep. now and then but we are trying to project forward what's going to happen only with the draft picks yep all right so there are twelve picks to be made uh, we're going to go back and forth except at the end of round two. Whoever goes second is going to have back-to-back picks. So it's going to go one, 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 two, and then one, one, one from there on out. Because you finished ahead of me last year in Duck, Duck, Juiced, I'm going to let you pick whether you want the first pick or the second pick. I just want to say, Professor Selman, when you uh, listen to this back uh, or watch this back, if you can just let me know if how the game theory or how the odds were tilted based on that. Because Bo asked me in, in our, I wouldn't even call it our green room, in our office, uh, would you, and in, in what round should the person drafting second go back to back? And I was like, oh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, whatever you think. I listened back to so. the 2019 version because it's been a while since <laughs> okay. we've done this as a two man game. Okay. Um, pre me. Pre you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the good old days, some people might yeah. say. Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and, and back then, we actually did the flip at the end of the draft, the very last round, last two rounds is where the flip went. But I think that that's. I think this year there's a little bit more uh, uh, waiting towards the beginning, and it's also not like you actually won this game last year, so yeah. I don't think you deserve the full sure. uh, benefit of, of stacking fine. the deck in your favor. Also, before we get into it, Team Chocolate Milk wants to know what platform is the sickle bracket on? Yeah, it's on ESPN. ESPN. Okay. Uh, and if you want, I can. I mean, what I'm going to do? I'm going <laughs> to put the link in the chat uh as we maybe when zach is reading yes. his ad i will put the link in the Perfect. chat for everybody uh so i i'm i'm gonna go with the first overall pick here you're gonna take the first overall. yes pick. i'm gonna All take right. first overall well, and then with that's the case take it away <laughs> mr handsome <laughs> so with the first overall pick here donald parham here we go i'm gonna go cornerback and that's not necessarily where i think the eagles are gonna go in the first round uh, they could but I think the Eagles go corner in the first two rounds. And there's there's some good corners. I, they are going to go corner in this draft. I feel confident in that. And I uh, there's there's a position, and we'll get into it, where I think they're more likely to go in the first round. But if they don't take that position in round one, then I think they might wait a little bit longer on the, on that. Uh, corner, It's a, if they don't go corner round one, and we should also give names here as, as we're talking uh, – in Daniel Jeremiah, I respect DJ's work. In his mock draft yesterday, he had the Eagles going Nate Wiggins, which Nate Wiggins is like your classic height, weight, speed corner out of Clemson. Uh, he fits the prototype that you're looking for. Um, now, there's other mock drafts that that I've seen that has like Cooper DeGene from Iowa, um, Terry and Arnold from Alabama is mainly he's he's viewed as the top corner in this draft. Coyd McKinstry, we had a great. Terry and Arnold, Coyd, McKinstry conversation with Fran at the Combine, comparing those two Bama corners. Uh, and then, I mean, we'll nerd out. We'll have a whole cornerback show, I imagine, I leading imagine up to so. the draft. Uh, i got to tell you, Zach, on Sunday, I went up to, uh, to Bristol. Yeah, I was going to ask you with, about this. Uh, with Sheil and sat with Coach Flynn to watch some wide receivers and corners. Uh, I, I invited you, but it was a little bit last minute, yep. I understand. Couldn't make, the, uh, couldn't make the move. The non-invite invite. I wouldn't I'm, call I'm it that. Joking. I'm uh, done joking. I'm you joking. Know, it's, 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 like, is it my place to invite somebody else to someone else's place? Like, I don't yeah. know. I feel like there, yeah. was, there was a bit of a, of a miscommunication yeah. on our end. Um, I, I liked Wiggins. 
more than I expected to. Okay. Um, because it's a little bit is a little bit light. Um, you like a little more heft. Well, I just like it to yeah. fit within general historical parameters, and he's a little bit light of that. You're a Chip Kelly guy. Well, I know you're an Emmanuel mm-hmm. Forbes guy, and how's that working out for mm-hmm. you? I, you know, it's it's like I keep hearing all these Aaron Donald things about his arm length coming out. Well, Aaron Donald could play football, so. And then Emmanuel Forbes can. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I liked uh, I liked Wiggins. I mean, I, I, Terry Arnold, shocker, was my yeah. favorite of the guys. Um, but I thought that was interesting. And I'll get to maybe some wide receiver thoughts uh, down the line. But some guys who make sense, I think, at, at corner. I think this is also uh, a pick that makes sense from the standpoint of if you're comparing it to another position that might be more likely in the first round. Corner, you could see him double dipping. Yes, that's true. That's true. They they have especially if they draft a nickel guy. Like exactly, uh, you got you got. I think you have upside for like a second round pick and a fourth round pick type deal. Yeah, so that's why corner was high on on, on my board because uh, I think there's even if you're not getting maybe the upside at the first round pick, there's a chance they don't go first round. I don't think by the end of day two of the draft it'll it'll go without them addressing corner. The one variable here, the one variable here, and I probably should have thought about this when I was putting my rankings together is I've been on record saying that if the Eagles make a splash in a trade, it'll be for a corner. You had the A.J. Terrell uh, trade idea yesterday, which I thought was a terrific idea. If you're going to move Reddick, if you can get Terrell, that's that's great. I mentioned Patrick Sertan, if he's available, um, as someone the Eagles should go hard after. Can Parham play out there? Don, and that 6'8 corner, that'd be, that'd be like Lenny Walls. Oh, all of a sudden size does matter. Lenny Walls. Do you guys remember Lenny Walls? Sure. Lenny Walls was a 6'4 corner from Boston College, played for the Broncos. Mm. Brandon Browner, 6'4 corner from Oregon State, played for the Seahawks and the Patriots and the Saints. So, Good for your immaculate grit. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, this is interesting, Zach. The Eagles have not drafted a corner uh, in the first two days of the draft since the Sidney Jones, mm-hmm. Rasul Douglas back-to-back in 2017. Yeah. And you know what? The Rasul Douglas pick, I think, actually – went better than it's kind of like uh, remembered to be. He was a third-round pick that gave them productive snaps for three years. They probably got rid of him a little too soon. Yeah, I think there's a difference between lamenting the pick and lamenting the release. Like, sure. They got fine value out of yes. the pick. They probably should not have they, let they, him they, go. They got let, they get rid of him too a, soon. You, know, you, can, you can try to unpack how much situations matter. Would yep. he have found that success in Philadelphia? Maybe not, but... Uh, certainly seeing the way that he has played after leaving Philadelphia and after being cut by another team would tell you that he had that in his body, at least. My guy says, when did they draft Devontae? In the fourth round of was Devontae Maddox. Yes. Uh, yeah. Fourth round of uh, Avante in 2018. Fourth round, Zach McPherson in 2021. And then a fourth rounder for Keely Ringo last year. Okay, corner, I think, I think makes sense. It was number two on my big board, okay. so I'm going to get my top mm. pick here. And this is, uh, this is interesting. Obviously... Offensive tackle is a position mm-hmm. that the Eagles care a lot about. And yet, because they have been blessed or had the foresight to have those positions locked down the way they have over the past decade plus with Jason Peters and Lane Johnson and now Jordan Mailata, they have not had to spend a ton of draft capital true. on the position. That, that ranking I was talking about of all the positions over the course of Howie Roseman's tenure, tackle is ninth with just 29 overall uh, points spent on the position. Now, some of that is a little bit finagled because we're saying Tyler Steen's uh, an interior offensive yep. lineman. So it's a little bit of wiggle room there. But they have not had to spend a ton of draft capital on the position. Now, obviously, they drafted Andre Dillard in the first round, and that didn't work out well because they already had Jordan Mailata. But I think just knowing how Howie Roseman feels about the importance of the position and having a plan for uh, replacing guys long term, Lane Johnson also cannot necessarily be relied upon to play 17 games in a season. Yep. The more I look at these numbers, the more I know that this is a tackle heavy draft. I mean, I would be flabbergasted if they don't take a tackle in the first two rounds, but I think it is I think it is easily the betting favorite to be their first round pick on offensive tackle. It's interesting you say that. I'm I'm going to push back a bit on on what on what you just said. Um I am expecting them to take a, a tackle in the first round. That's if 
I got a, a, a DM and, I, and my DMs are now open. I, I think when I got verified, mm, it went flex. to it went to verified only. Yeah, this goes to your just general trust in technology yeah. and like they know best and the absurdity of you looking at the for you tab in the middle of the opening of free agency. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I I think something with the verified made it like verified only, and I I did not know when that happened. Um, but now it's it's open anyway. Someone messaged me last night asking where I, I would put my turkeys between offensive tackle and corner in the first round. And I said offensive tackle, like 65, 35, or 60, 40. Uh, I, I expect offensive tackle. But I wouldn't be flabbergasted if they go two rounds without an offensive tackle because if they don't take one in the first round, I don't know if they circle back and like definitely take one in, in round two. I think there's a bit of a drop-off at that position. That's fair. I, I mean, I say that because they've got – two second round sure. picks because yeah. there's three picks in yeah. the first two rounds and I would be very surprised if they don't use one of those three on the position that I think they're yeah. gonna, they're going to prioritize. I, I and just I do mean, think there is enough depth that sure. in the second round there are going to be guys that maybe they end up having to move up a little bit for. Okay, but, yeah. yeah. If if they move up I mean this is a really good really good tackle draft. Like the best tackle draft in a long time. And there have been tackle drafts like we talked about Mackay Becton that that was not particularly well actually Werfs was in that draft. Um, but yeah, well, here last year it was was not a good tackle draft, right? Um, but this is a really good tackle draft. I just think you could see like five off the board uh, in the first round, and then maybe six with Kingsley. And when you get to that, then you might be saying, "All right, well, the value doesn't match the position here at fifty or fifty-three." Yeah, I think that's. I don't think that's a crazy take. Uh, before we get to your second round pick, Zach, the third overall pick, let me tell you because Howie Roseman's position valuations have not changed over the years. And you know what else hasn't changed over the years? The colors of this. You could sort of make a case that the colors of this are similar to the colors of the great taste of Miller Lite because the great taste of Miller Lite has not changed over the years. It's the original light beer, and to this day, it is still the best one. Miller Lite has more of the taste you want and less of the stuff you don't. And if you want to do your own version of Duck Duck Juice around you know, the bar table or the fireplace and you want to suck them back with the boys, you know that Miller Lite is what you need to have in a nice cold bucket of ice. Miller Lite keeps it simple, undebatable quality, great taste, only 96 calories. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most, a light beer that tastes like beer. It's less filling and only 96 calories. The original light beer since 1975. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time to get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y birds, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. Yesterday was the first day of spring, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to bring that up because the spring purchase market, I, I want to tell you about Mortgage CS because the spring purchase market is almost here and it's heating up quickly. And many clients, especially first time home buyers, are reaching out as they want to be ready when the rates drop. That's what they say. But, but that's what everyone else is doing. Given limited inventory and strong demand, competition is extremely fierce this year. Get in touch with Mortgage CS to prepare and ensure you will be able to stand out and make the strongest offers possible. Mortgage CS stands for Mortgage Concierge Service. The C and the S is for Concierge Service. It's White Glove Service. Mortgage CS is an independent mortgage broker based right here in Philly. That gives you full control of the lenders that they work with. It's available. Tw- they're available 24-7. Mortgage CS is a licensed coast-to-coast in California, Colorado, D.C., Delaware, Florida, Ma- uh, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Virginia, and Washington. So don't forget to spread the word to families and friends in these areas. Or maybe there's a football player who signs in a different market. Jack Driscoll is going down to Florida now. He could sign up with Mortgage CS. We are here to educate and empower the clients. Mortgage CS ha- uh, helps the clients obtain ultra-competitive rates, and they have exceptional customer service, 24-7 availability from the two owners, Alec and Ben. They'll help you in a competitive market by calling the listing agents, reviewing offers, and highlighting your positive credentials 
with their stellar reputation. There's tons of easy to use tools to make the mortgage process more approachable. When you hear the word mortgage, think of Mortgage CS, think of Ben and Alec. Save Ben's telephone number 267-391-7425 to your phone. Email Ben at ben at mortgagecs.com. Call, text Ben anytime, day or night. You can even talk Philly sports. Check out mortgagecs.com slash PHLY to get started. This advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Um, uh, Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. Visit mortgagecs.com for more information. All right, you are on the clock, Zach, with the third overall pick in the 2024 Duck Duck Juice. Draft. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting this year is that our our rankings might be a little different, uh, which is good because you, you don't want it to be like I'm just taking your third. Your, um, I think we probably have the next one. Okay, number three on our board here. I'm going wide receiver. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is a loaded, loaded, loaded wide receiver draft class. Now that doesn't mean the Eagles are going to take one in round one, although it very well might be the best player on their board. And round one is a, is a wide receiver. But it could also be the best player on their board in round two is a wide receiver. And the best player on their board, well, they don't have a third-round pick right now, but in round four, if they trade, you know, and if they got a third-round pick, could be a wide receiver. Uh, so this is not um, a pick for the seven points in the first round. This is a pick, maybe I get the six, maybe I get a four, maybe they take two guys, right? Because there's a, I think multiple picks is yeah, absolutely on the board here. It's a deep wide receiver draft class. There's good players here. Um, I've said I think one of their top three picks is going to be a, a wide receiver. I think their third wide receiver next year. So the wide receiver who plays the third most snaps on the team next year is a rookie. Um, I think I'm, I agree with that. Yeah. So I, I uh, now I'm coming. I'm coming around okay. to I just the the second round pick is what makes me hesitant only because I think there are personality dynamics to be aware of. But I, I mean. I would take a wide receiver that early. I yeah. think that's what like that's what the offense needs is a guy who you can trust there. I, I'm just not 100% sure they're going to do that. And I also sort of think if they're going to do that, the Devontae Smith contract extension needs to come before that. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I would imagine they make that a priority. But let, on, on, on that note, and this is tied into whether they take a wide receiver in, in round two, uh, What's the, the not not gun to your head or uh, what's water the, gun? Yeah, yeah, water gun to your where sphincter. Sphincter. <laughs> well, okay, well, okay, water gun to your back. How about that? Or sure. Okay, water gun to your back. Um, at uh, in year four of the rookie contract, are both AJ Brown and Devontae Smith on the Eagles? Of this rookie? Yeah. Of if they took a wide receiver no. in second round. Yeah. So. You're you're very well might be getting a starter like a top two guy in year three and year four of his rookie contract. Yeah, but certainly I think a top three guy early on. And I did want to add add this uh, this this ties into your pick for offensive tackle. <laughs> That's just I, a bidet. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, I, I did not bring up I did not bring up um, uh, this during the offensive tackle talk. But whenever I hear people pushing back on offensive tackle, they're like, "Why would you draft?" A guy in the first round is not going to start for you. It is a you're taking a leap if you're expecting Lane Johnson to play 16 games or, or 17 games next year. Um, not just that, and, and that's even disregarding his his injury history at the age that he is playing at next year. It's rare to expect an offensive tackle to last the entire year, right? The beating that 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 position takes. So that guy. Could, I also think like the perfect the perfect prospect for them if is somebody who might have guard flexibility and can start at right guard sure. right away. Yeah, but even still, that that guy might play five games at, at right tackle as as a, as a rookie. So that so I, I bring that up with it's tied into wide receiver. The Eagles have been extraordinarily lucky during the past two years to get remarkable health from both AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. You saw in the postseason the first play the first game that AJ Brown missed was the playoffs last year. Um, and you saw what the offense looked like without A.J. Yeah. Brown, right? Devontae, the first game that he missed was week 18 last year. Um, you saw what the offense looked without him. I think having a wide receiver who is a – it doesn't need to be A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith level, but is a starting caliber player, is that's really important to have – 
because you can't keep clinging to this idea that you're going to get 17 games from Devontae and AJ. Yeah, I think I think wide receiver has both like maybe the highest floor and the highest ceiling of any uh, position here because they're going to draft a wide receiver. No doubt about it. Howie Roseman has never gone two drafts without drafting a wide hmm. receiver until 2022 and 2023. He's not going to go three drafts sure. without it. Plus, they also need it. Plus, the draft class makes it so that there are going to be guys uh, who make it worthwhile. Whereas like, if they trade yeah. for Jerry Sneed, maybe they don't draft a corner. It's, I think that's unlikely, but uh, you could say the same thing yes. about tackle. If they don't find a guy in the first two rounds, maybe they try to find an interior guy instead. Wide receiver is absolutely going to be someone who's added to this team. Yeah. Uh, all right, this is tough here. Now, I have, I have my, little, um, my little snake here. I get to go back-to-back -back picks. I think my first pick is easy, and I'm on the fence about my second pick. So let me tell you about my first one. Uh, that's interior offensive line. Um, I think I am very confident that at some point on day three, they're going to draft at least one, maybe two guys. They've signed Matt Hennessy, but other than that, they have nobody on the roster for like the long term. Now, Tyler Steen potentially is your starting right guard, but backup wise, depth wise, this is a position that they want to be able to fill. They want to give Jeff Statland some guys to develop and they have to turn over this roster. I think interior offensive line is a uh, sort of a base hit for me. Okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I like that. They, they definitely need depth there. Um, I think even with Hennessy, you, you could be thinking about getting a guy who, who can be a backup center for you down the line um it, they always if if things are equal on on the board between a linebacker and offensive lineman they're gonna take an offensive lineman right they, they've shown that time and time again that they they, they want to have developmental offensive linemen and by the way like how he's done a good job you know late in late in drafts and whether it was jason kelsey whether it was jordan mylata um they've they've done a decent job finding Offensive or a good job, I should say, finding offensive linemen on on day three, so you can get points there. This is tough. You can make a case for I think three different positions here. Yeah. Um. Oof. Do I want the one that I I am I am sure they're going to draft at some point, or one that has a little bit more upside? Huh. I think. Uh, all right, I think I'm gonna go linebacker. Uh, Interesting. Okay, that, I, I, that 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 was my fourth, by the way. So okay, yeah. um, I think there's a chance they don't take a linebacker at all. Really? I think there's a chance they need young linebackers. They do. Yeah, but you know, Devin Undrafted, White is young-ish. Yeah. Uh, they have, if they love Nakobe as much yeah. as they tell us they love Nakobe, uh, Ben Van Sumeren is on the come. It's possible that maybe they maybe they go just heavy and undrafted free agency. <laughs> See. You made Andrew laugh. See, I'm glad <laughs> now Andrew's laughing at me like I don't know what on the come is referring to, but that's a reference to Julio Jones being on the come, and so it's all <laughs> it's all circling together. Okay. Um, I think I would be surprised if they don't draft a linebacker at some point on day three. They need they need bodies there. Um, they need to raise the floor a little bit. You cannot count on linebackers making an impact on defense early. It takes some time to develop. Yeah. But uh, just in terms of getting guys in the pipeline, I think, um, you know, they haven't drafted a linebacker. They've drafted Nakobe and then Jacoby Stevens over the past three years. Just those two guys. I think they need somebody else in there. Nakobe and Jacoby. Yeah. Never put that together. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like that pick because I do think they – they've made a mistake in recent years of not building that pipeline of, like, day three guys. Like, if you're – we we know that they don't make major investments at the top of the draft, but I I think that you want to take swings. Now you can do that in the undrafted market. They hit on T.J. Edwards, obviously. They're hoping they hit on Ben Van Sumeren, but you can also do that on on day three of the draft, where they frankly haven't had a lot of success adding linebackers. Um, I saw in my for you tab uh, the uh, there's reports like linking them to Edger and Cooper. I keep saying, I, I see fans saying, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they take this guy in the first round. It would shock me if they took Edger and Cooper in the first round. Hmm. Um, I don't think they take an off-ball linebacker in the first round. Uh, I think. What else did you see in your For You tab? A lot of uh, racist, misogynistic stuff and people saying uh, nudes in bio? I don't see racist and misogynistic stuff in, in, in my For You tab, actually, at all. Um, I see like a lot of... Um, like uh, 
I saw a video of a uh, of there's uh, I'm trying to think what it there's like a hand in you know it's like a, a statue where it's in China I think it is where you can climb up to the top of the hand um, and <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'll pull up the video. It's a statue of a hand. <laughs> no, it's a statue. Someone probably knows 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 what this is. And the hand is out, and you walk up on the hand, and there's like n- there's nothing below you. I also saw a video. What? Yeah, I'm gonna. So pull it's this a up. it's a really big statue. Yes. and you walk it's, out it's, on it's, the it's hand. It's like a daredevil type thing. Okay. I saw um, I saw this video of this guy who's like walking on skyscrapers, um, with no harness. I mean, I don't know how this guy assigned to me in the For You. I see a lot of like, this isn't a surprise. I see like a lot of like self help um, yeah, types right. types type stuff. Like, uh, you know, if you just do these fourteen life hacks, you're gonna, you know, you're you're gonna be mm-hmm. good. I I, I this see This is a like lot how you were really deep in real estate Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Uh, I, I see some some real estate stuff in there. Um, yeah, so in my. Let's see if I click my for you. What what what's the first thing? This this is I'm playing with fire here. Oh, Kaylin Kaler here, Rob Motti here, <laughs> Nicole Arbeck, Jamie Lynch. I don't know. Oh, I don't know what this. Oh, is. what is that? <laughs> Anyone? Now that's basically over. I can I can tell you I dated a pro athlete for a hot minute. <laughs> At least it's a good story. <laughs> and Nicole. So I don't know what this is, Jonathan. Uh, wow. It's, a, it's a, a lot of football stuff here. All right, a lot of wags apparently. Uh, oh. Puck. <laughs> Um, what was that sound? <laughs> uh, no, Puck, uh, the, the media <laughs> website. So, anyways, <laughs> that's in my For You tab right now. Uh, let's get back to the right way. So, here, Cal Bundy has seen the hand statue. I'm going to look this up. I, I, it's a weird thing to search. China hand statue. Yeah, no, just do that. Oh, here just we go. Here we go. Hand. A Buddhist hand located in Guadcong, China. Look how freaky this thing is. Now, there's been 56 million people who have viewed this. Okay. I am, I am, I am one of them. Um, yeah, that's a pass for me. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But that's so it's. But it's, you like watching people do it. No, so I think I get this historic video in my timeline quite a bit. You know, just because they call it historic doesn't make it historic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you see all, 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 all kinds of things on here anyways. I bet you do. Um, so anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Edger and Cooper. Hand. Edger and Cooper. By the way, I see him in, let's, let's get back to the regular scheduled program. Super chat from, uh, from real time. Zach is secure in his search. Uh, justified he's saying, to do he's that. saying for, for you to be willing to just go for your search, there is, you means you're secure in it. Oh, yeah. I, trust me. I, there's... I'm I'm very confident in that my history isn't there's 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 not the only you know how to use your your incognito tabs is what you're saying no that's not what I'm saying I'm saying the only thing that <laughs> is is that there's something I don't know like what I got caught on with Kill a Cow that day yes you, yeah yeah hentai is the tie yeah. is your number one response for the letter H when you type that into Google my uh, no <laughs> my um, <laughs> fault is that I can be too innocent minded sometimes right. Mm. So I'm like, oh, what is this? Ooh, whoa! I didn't uh, mean to Google I that. That's okay. your, I don't know if that's always true, but yeah, it's your know. turn to pick. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that's often true. Um, so I will go here with Edge Rusher. Uh, okay. Which I actually moved up my board as we were doing this, and if you're operating under the presumption that Hassan Reddick's going to be moved. And look, maybe he, he he's he's not. Brandon Graham's entering the last year of his career. Um, the Eagles uh, they obviously signed Bryce Huff. That Bryce Huff's going to be here for a, a bit of time. Josh Sweat is entering the last year of his contract. They have confidence in Nolan Smith, but you need to go three, four edge rushers deep, right? Um, the, I don't like this edge rusher draft class. Uh, I've said that there are. A, I would take the edge rushers in next year's class are more appealing to me in, in some regards. But I can see the Eagles taking a swing on a guy, especially you made a really good point when they signed Zach Bond. Maybe the body type that they're looking for has evolved and they try to look for someone more with that body type. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that the contracts are structured, if, if Hassan Reddick is traded, I don't think Josh Reddick is back next year. 
it yeah. seems like. And so that means that all of a sudden you've got Huff and Nolan Smith and nobody else. And we know it's a position that if there are any ties, like on the board, they're going to take an edge rusher. So I think um, I think that's a that's a high upside pick. Like it's not it would not it would not shock me if they took an edge rusher in the second round if there was a guy who made sense. Yeah. What are you smiling about? No, oh, yeah. I'm seeing people say, I'm seeing people talk about um, my defense, Your Honor. I thought hentai was a necktie with the female chicken on. I don't know what that means. Um, hentai. Uh, oh, I, okay. I I see. What you mean. Look, if there's anything I'm guilty of in my Google search history, it's this. Okay, it's it's that I I'm a big Googler, so like um, <laughs> so I'll like search, you know, you might see like I'm searching all these different players and and, and stuff. You know, as a fixed nude at the end. What? No, oh no no no. I just mean like it would be creepy, like the amount of like players that I search on Google and stuff like that. That's all. Anyways, back to back to this. your views on Edge. A uh, super chat from Mr. Rudy Poo, who says, Edge or in Cooper had eight sacks, Howie. We need to trick Howie, fellas. Please push this narrative. He's an edge. Mm, see what you mean there. Um, you know who his defensive coordinator was last year? Uh, Bilbo Baggins. Elijah Robinson, f- formerly of Temple and Penn State, now the D coordinator at Syracuse. Well, well there you go. Shout All out right. to Fran Brown. Uh I'm between two spots here, but I'm going to take the one where I feel like the Eagles are like they've got those three fifth round picks. And I will I will make a prediction right now that if they keep all three fifth round picks, one of those fifth round picks is a tight end. Um, oh, OK. And there's just I mean, there's no there's Grant Calcaterra on the roster right now. There's Albert O on the roster right now. D- Dallas Goddard is, as you we say time and time again, is the age that. Uh, yeah. You know, Zach Ertz was when they drafted Goddard and the age that Selleck was when they drafted Ertz. I think there's a, an outside chance of them making this a pick earlier in the draft. But at some point, I would be pretty surprised if they don't draft a tight end. And so I will take, uh, I'll take my three points here and move on. All right. I mean, we've talked about there's like nobody available in free agency. Yeah. I'm it's okay just, with tight end. I don't love this, 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 this tight end class, but I keep saying this. The the like under the radar trade up candidate for me is Bri- is Brock Bowers, like if Brock now Brock Bowers might very well go to the Jets, uh, in the first round there, but uh, at what ten, but if he somehow is in the teens, that's like an under the radar trade up move. He is an awesome awesome player. It's a bad use of resources, but okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to so, go or do you want me to read an ad? Uh, let's let's hit our ads here. Okay. Um, in that case, let's talk about Rocket Money. Because Rocket Money, you already know about Rocket Money. We've been talking about Rocket Money for, uh, for a long time. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. I use Rocket Money. Zach uses Rocket Money. It saves us money. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with just a few taps. I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to talk to people on the phone. I don't have to deal with jumping through hoops of customer service. They do it for me, and they remind me of things that I may have forgotten about. Or like if a a price has jumped, you know? Like when you get a, if you get a new car or like a, you lease a new car, you get the, the really good deal on Sirius radio, right? It's yes. like super oh, cheap. Yes. Yes. But then and after then, like oh, six months, I get hit with that. It jumps up yep. and you see it there and oh, I got to get on the phone and see if I can get this deal back. Rocket Money is going to let you know and they're going to save you the hassle. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y. That's rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y. Rocketmoney.com slash P-H-L-Y. And speaking of P-H-L-Y, we have a lot of great stuff going on here uh, at, at P-H-L-Y, including our P-H-L-Y events. Um, and we have spring training coming up, or I'm sorry, opening day coming up, one of the best days of the year. And you can join our very own Jamie Lynch, Renee Washington, and John Foley for a pregame live show 
and watch party at Bet Parks Casino and Sportsbook. Our friends at Miller Lite will have 16 ounce can specials from 11:30 a.m. to close. PHLY is going to be raffling off PHLY swag, game day swag, and more. Also for the Sixers, courtesy of our friends at Coors Light, we are hosting our first of many Sixers watch parties. <laughs> Join us at Deeks Barbecue on West Berkeley Street. When the Sixers take on the Cavs at 7.30, show up and enter a raffle to win two tickets, Section 116, Row 13, to the April 9th game against Detroit. Deeks will be offering a $3.20 ounce drafts all Go night Deeks. long. Uh, check out all of our upcoming events at allphly.com under the events calendar at RSVP. Also, make sure you are a diehard member. We talk about diehard. You get 20% off events. You get fr- a free shirt when you sign up. And every year when, when you renew, you get premium written content, including Vince, our, our GM here, says to me, Vince asks me, when's the next uh, mock draft coming? We need a, a post-free agency mock draft. And I said, Vince, I'll have one for you on Friday. So you're going to have a Friday mock draft this week for the diehards. There you go. Look forward to that. All right, Zach, you are on the hook for, on the clock rather, for the eighth overall pick in the 2024 Duck Duck Juice draft. Just to recap, you have gone... It went corner, offensive tackle, wide receiver, interior offensive line, edge, linebacker, and tight end. I also just want to make mention, too, as, as we're doing this, sometimes a helpful tool is, is looking at their uh, top 30 visit tracker, yes. which uh, Devin Jackson over at the Philadelphia Inquirer, he's, he's been keeping track of this. And a good point for Bo here is that offensive line heavy so far in some of these reported visits which shows you if they're looking mm-hmm. at the old... Now, we know they're interested in offensive line, but these are tackles and guards that they're bringing in. Yes, yeah, very important just for the mechanics of this game and the adjudication of it that I have both tackle and interior offensive line, so we don't have to worry about uh, yes. deciding what position a guy plays. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so, you know what I'm going to do here? What you going to do? <laughs> this one Z-B, is... ZB, ZB, what you going to do? This is not what on gonna the board. What you going to do when this the pick's is, on you? This is not on the board for the pre-draft visits, but I can see them taking this, and that's running back. I'm going running back here because now they they did sign Davis Price to a futures deal. Hi, Davis Price. They, TDP. They, they gave him money, former third-round pick. Not to by, be confused with EDP. I, get I would not make that confusion. I would not confuse that at all. Um, T and E rhyme. It's yeah, nice, so, nah. pretty much the same ballpark. Uh, Ty Davis Price could they could view? You know, he's like twenty three years old. They could view that as like their young up and coming back. To, that would be to, silly to develop. But I think that you look at Gainwell entering the last year of his deal. Saquon is in a situation. You know, Saquon's their obvious lead back. Their lead back here. But this is a position where they need to continue just to add young players. And um, it's a spot where uh, you can find a contributor on day three of the draft. And I think that's something that they do here. Yeah, uh, running back was not the next one on my board. Okay. Um, but I, I, see, I see the point. And the Gainwell point is a good one. This is the last year of his rookie deal. They need somebody. You can't count on Saquon Barkley playing uh, every down. And they don't have anybody else in the fold. I mean, I don't think that they can count on Tyrion Davis-Price. I think, I think running back's a fine day three dart throw. Bo has a guy for you, Ray Davis. No sell. You, I was listening back to the Fran thing. You were getting a kick out of Ray Davis's name. Well, I don't even remember that. You don't? No, but he's okay. like the old guy. <laughs> you made a big deal about his name. Oh yeah, he sounds, he sounds like he sounds <laughs> like a 19, 1940s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like Braylon. Yeah. I li- I like Braylon Allen. Um, if he falls the day four, or I'm sorry, the day three. Wait, how recently were you listening back to that episode with Fran? Uh, not that. I mean, I listened back when we got back from the combine. Okay. So that was what two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Took a nice walk listening to that one. Good for you. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, I'm on the board for the ninth overall pick. Uh, really, uh, uh, two positions left here, and I'm going to go with defensive tackle. Okay. Uh, nice certainly one. not a uh, need in terms of young guys. They've used first round picks on the position each of the past two years. They've also got Milton Williams. But if you decide you don't want to extend Milton Williams, or you think that there's uh, you know a day three guy who's got some nose tackle upside, this is a like you know it's like Moro Ojimbo last year, right? Yep. Like they didn't need a defensive tackle, but if there is a tie, the tie is going to go to the lineman. And I'm going to go with defensive tackle. I think they do need another body there. And so if they don't really, you know, if, if P.J. Mustafer is not going to cut it as the fourth or fifth defensive tackle, 
there's a there's a, an opening in the rotation for a for a big boy. Okay, yeah, I I like that there. That was actually that was the next one on my board. But I switched to running back, uh, but I like that. And they've already, according to Devin Jackson, um, they've already brought in uh, Christian Boyd from Northern Iowa, who is like a 320 pound mm. defensive lineman. So that it shows you that they're doing work. They do work on all the positions, but they're doing work on the D tackles. Um, so I am going to go then with safety, right? Got that's to, that's yeah. the last one left. Uh, not well, non quarterback special teams. And when you look at, at, at safety here, the Eagles have C.J. Garner-Johnson, Sidney Brown, Reed Blankenship, right? Um, behind that, though, unless they add uh, Justin Simmons, as we talked about yesterday, they, did, they, they, don't, really had, uh, they don't really have anyone who uh, you say is like definitely going to be on the team. Makai Garner, Tristan McComb, you, you don't know if that's the case. Also, they, they need to boost up their, their nickel corners. And we keep thinking they can go with someone with like inside outside versatility. Maybe they go with someone who's safety corner for, oh, I'm sorry, safety slot versatility, similar to a CJ Garner Johnson. Uh, so I also can nice here that you have corner and safety. So yes. another position where there might have been some debate. Sure. Saved. Yeah. And, and, and so you, you tend to kind of look D backs late in the draft sometimes. I can see them doing that. And just from a special team standpoint, mm-hmm. guys who can impact special teams on day three, safety is one of them. I think safety is a – I mean, it was absolutely the, the right pick there with three picks left. And I think you can make a case that that will be uh, – that, that, that could be the pick that wins the Duck Duck Juice draft for you, Zach. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Okay, don't sell it. That's fine. <laughs> no, I appreciate the confidence in, in that. I, I think your offensive line uh, – I think cornering the O-line market for you was a strong play here. Uh, because last year you were unfortunately shut out thanks to DeAndre Swift. It's true. Uh, and now there's four. Hard to pe- believe that that could happen. There were there were there are three people playing, so you only had four positions. So it's a little, it's hard to get shut out this year. But it was hard to get shut out last year, to be fair. But I, I think that um, you were in good shape with offensive linemen, and they could take multiple at either of those positions, and that could boost you up. All right. Uh, it's down to quarterback and special teams. I think it would be a surprise if they did either one of these, but mm-hmm. considering that they have recently signed their kicker, their punter, and their long snapper, it's hard to believe they would do that at all. And even though a quarterback seems kind of crazy, it's more likely that uh, you know something weird happens to Kenny Pickett or uh, Tanner McKee and they decide to use a quarterback pick than it is them doing that on special teams. So I will take quarterback. Okay, I like, um, yeah, I like that pick between the two. You never know. They could always take a developmental guy at quarterback. I don't think they take a developmental kicker, punter, or long snapper. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame for all the Harrison Mevis fans out there because he's, he's a fun kicker. Um, yeah, not Harrison Uvis, not Harrison Weavis, Harrison Mevis. Harrison, Harrison Mevis is uh, he's an interesting one. And then Mevis and Mutthead. There's some good kickers. There's Will Reichert, I believe, from Alabama. There's Joshua Cardi from Stanford. Um, trying to, those are the ones that jumped to my head. I mean, you should be making up names right now. That's what you should be <laughs> And doing. the top punter is from Iowa, uh, Tory Tower, Toby Tower. It's Tower's the last name, Tory or Toby? Tyrod. It's definitely not Tyrod. I think I, I, Tim the Tool Man. I think this one's Australian. So, Toby. I think it's, let's see. Uh, does the chat know? Toby. Is it Toby Tower, Iowa? No, that does not come up. I feel like the name um, Tubby. Tubby, Tubby doesn't get enough play. I was I was right. Tory Taylor from Melbourne, Australia. Why was Why was Tubby Smith the end of the line on Tubby? <laughs> well, it was his I nickname. Think we don't get enough Tubbies it was, anymore. It was his nickname. His given name was not Tubby. Yeah, but I mean, I don't, I don't see any more Tubbies hanging around. Speaking of Tubby Smith, <laughs> um, you want to reveal your NCAA tournament picks? Oh, I don't have my picks yet. Oh, you haven't done your picks yet? No, okay. but we have the, oh, we we do have the bracket. Ah, uh, okay. So no, I, I was not allowed to put a link in the, in the uh, comments, the live comments, but I will put the link in the comments, if I'm allowed to, underneath the video when the video gets posted. Uh, again, the password is pineapple with a capital P. And uh, I don't know. Do I want to tweet it? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I guess so. And uh, we should say what the winner is going to get. I feel like the winner of this... Bracket challenge gets to come on the show for a segment or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I'll, I will interview you. Zach will Google you. <laughs> I will, actually. Uh, probably will. That. Yes. And uh, who knows if he'll Google you and put nude at the end of it. 
That I will definitely not do that. Why would you ever do that? It's curious. Never done that. Never would. Mm. So um, no, but I will. You know, I'll, I'll see if there's anything you've written or if there's any published articles with with your name in it. Maybe yeah. something else. We'll, we'll throw in some other kind of PHLY swag and uh, yeah, I like that. Something good. Uh, what else? Uh, what else is on your mind here before we close out the show? Uh, so let's see. Elsewhere in the NFL, there's. Pro Do you want to give away your picks? Well, I'll I'll say this. Now I in am in Virginia a, last night. Tough. Oh, I I need to say this by the way. Okay, you will you will laugh at this. Now you brought the Virginia thing, and I should have mentioned this. Listen, here's the thing. He no. gets a lot of sight, but Tony Bennett is a really good coach. No, I wasn't a wonderful say man that and a leader of men. Okay, I, so this is what you need to know. Think of all the things he's accomplished and how nice he was to me when I was on that beat. Okay, Tony Bennett, do not give him slack. Bo, first off, I wouldn't judge someone based on them being nice to me on the beat. He's he's a he's a good coach, but we don't need to get into that right now. What I want to get into is this: Colorado State. I am mm. I am in. <laughs> I'm a faculty member at Colorado State. Ah. Okay. And so when you brought up the who's thing, my boss at Colorado State says to me, like, why didn't you give a he says, hey, why oh, you give wait, CSU wait, wait. A, over a shout out? And I say, I say, yeah, I gotta be objective. <laughs> Come on. I think he had that look over text. He's like, you work here, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh yeah, my I am uh I'm a faculty proud, member at the sport management program proud ram oh i'm a faculty member at the colorado state um you know their uh, sport management program and so uh yeah colorado state's advancing so shout out to csu and the fine students who are uh some of whom or maybe there's a student or two in my class this year we will see this summer i would imagine that one of the fun things about working at colorado state is that you just know deep down in your bones that no matter how bad of a job you do, you will never be the worst employee they've ever had. <laughs> That's a Steve Dazio joke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did not think about that um, at all. But uh, no, I look, I had a great experience this past summer. I mean, this, the floor has been set. No, you the, cannot possibly no, and also go the, that. The students were awesome. You could fail everybody. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, you could. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to this, this summer as well, teaching again. So shout out to CSU. How do you find the time? Well, it's not a matter of finding the time. It's not like you just discover time. You make the time, mm. right? You can, you... I imagine the first year is the toughest, though, because you got to put together the curriculum. Now it feels like maybe, yeah. you tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the work has been done. Yeah, I underrate... I, look, I admit this. I underrated... <laughs> how time consuming it was going to be <laughs> grading is really time consuming um yeah and especially it matters to the people yeah and even if you you, you know you have a, a rubric in, in place but like it's very subjective so it's like wait is this you know it's hard to if if i feel I, like you should change the name from a rubric to a zangero rick <laughs> well i'm saying if if you're like a math professor okay I mean, there's there's a right answer or a, a, a wrong answer. If I'm if only it was so yeah. so naive about yeah. all the things that could go into grading a math test. <laughs> yeah, if 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 as I'm, if they're as if in college they're just doing <laughs> multiplication and subtraction. <laughs> I'm saying, but for this, I'm like, what's the difference between an 87 or a 91 or a 83 or you know? Now there's a different. You can tell Active the difference. verbs. <laughs> you can tell the difference between a. A seventy and not in a ninety, like yeah, that's that's pretty clear. That's like me playing baseball and you playing baseball. Um, but yeah, good. I one. agree. Yeah, um, but some of these, there's it's left not up like to a nuance. Sixteen and ninety-five, but yeah, <laughs> it's left up to nuance. So uh, no, I I think I'll be a better grader and a better professor my second time around. But yeah, I do have the the second time around. I do, I, I, I do have the course in in place so that I, I can operate with more confidence this time. A little step by step for you. <laughs> Someone says breaking Berman says Professor Summon has it easy. <laughs> I'm not at all <laughs> suggesting that. I'm definitely not suggesting that. I'm I'm, you I'm love saying, getting in feuds with all of our uh, beloved yeah. guests. No, uh, although I, I would have loved if Coach Flynn reached out and said, Hey, do you want to come watch this tape? But well, I mean you've been burying I mean, him I for like three years. I definitely don't bury Coach Flynn. Great respect for Coach Flynn and the program that he has. Glad to see uh, Julia is alive and well. Appreciating the step-by-step -step shout out. Yeah, feel well, Julia. Were you a TJF guy? Yeah, I was actually. Well, of course. I guess I should have. I, we knew that. Wait, I mean, Danielle Fischel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's. 
<laughs> Employment television. Oh, for I, you. Love, I mean, Family Matters. I, I liked Urkel. Uh, you liked Urkel? <laughs> <laughs> that was your favorite? You liked Urkel? <laughs> no, Urkel actually was not my favorite. Um, but I, yeah, I enjoyed Urkel. I, I liked when he became um, Stefan. Stefan. Yeah, mm. Stefan was cool. Gave you something to dream about. <laughs> um, yeah, I watched Boy Meets World. Uh, Sister Sister was on there. Mm. But, Did you yeah. watch Step by Step? Yeah, Step by Step. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Step by Step, Day by, day, by day. day. Yep. Was Family Matters on TGIF? Yeah. I watched Family Matters. Um, so I liked it all. All right. Andrew? Who would have thought? TGIF guy? No? No. Too cool. No, he's a little younger. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. All Who's, right. Oh, there you go. Okay. Boy Meets World guy. Who's your favorite character in Boy Meets World? You too. You too. Got a, you guys got a lot to talk about. Bo makes it seem like I was the only person. I, I was. I was the only ten-year-old in Philly who thought this. No, I just think the degree to which you're still, you know, revved up about it is. I'm not revved up about it at all. Talking anymore. about. Not. Not the case at all. And again, worth noting that you are the one who put those uh, weird things in her husband's cinnamon toast crunch. What? I don't. That's a that's a reference I will not Google. Yes, I mean, you can Google that. It's safe to Google. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can Google uh, Topanga husband cinnamon toast crunch. Okay. Okay. Nude. <laughs> that will do it for uh, this episode of the PHLY Eagles podcast. We thanks we thanks everybody for listening and watching another duck duck juice draft down the drain in the rearview mirror. Look, to, look forward to following uh, this one over the course of draft weekend. Many more games to come as we begin our, uh, our draft foray in earnest. Ernest J. Smith. Thank you for listening and watching. We will talk to you tomorrow at noon. And as always, we love you. We all see it like-